Welcome to a how to play Bolt Action Battle Report. Bolt Action is an excellent game for players looking to get into miniature wargaming. It is historical based World War II themed and the rules are well written and easy to grasp. This video is not sponsored, I haven't been sent anything, and the goal of this video is to help players discover and hopefully learn to play a great game by watching one take place. If you like the style of this battle report, be sure to let me know in the comments below or simply give the video a thumbs up. As a quick disclaimer, I'm just an average guy. We may miss some things as we go along or get something wrong. It happens. If you do catch something, I urge you to leave a comment below. I will update the description with a timestamp of that correction. Without further ado, let's hit the tabletop where today we'll be playing a 500 point game so we can discuss the rules a bit more in depth. Most of your games in bolt action will be a thousand points or greater. My son will be assisting me today as the German player and I'll be heading up the American forces. Also due to the lower point game, we're going to be playing on a four x four versus the traditional six x four. For list building in this game, I recommend Easy Army. I'll put a link in the description below, but do not click on it until you're ready to leave the video as it does affect my watch time. Today I'll be taking a US reinforced platoon. They will have a veteran second lieutenant with an extra man. Having two men in this unit makes them a small target, which is a minus one to hit for the enemy. There will be two veteran infantry squads. They will be at full strength, so taking the maximum number of men allowed. This allows them to reroll failed order tests until they take a casualty. The units will consist of an NCO with a rifle and 11 veteran infantry. Two of them will have BARs and the rest will have rifles. I will also give them anti-tank grenades. To round out the list, we will add a regular bazooka team and a regular sniper team. This list comes out to 496 points and 5 order dice. The Germans will take a reinforced platoon as well. They will have a regular second lieutenant with one extra man. The infantry selections will be two squads of regular here grenadiers. That will consist of one NCO with an SMG and seven regular infantry. One will have an LMG which makes another a loader. The rest will have rifles. They will be backed up by a regular Panzer IV. In total, 501 points, which is over the agreed limit, but I wanted to keep the squads consistent. Now that we have our forces, the game we rolled up was Double Envelopment, where seizing terrain quickly is the key to victory. With a winning die roll, the Germans select their table edge, and per the scenario, must hit send half of their units rounding down into reserve. They elect to send the infantry squads into reserve, keeping the second lieutenant and the Panzer IV on the battlefield. The US forces do the same, electing to send their sniper team and second lieutenant and one infantry squad into reserve. Putting our non-reserve dice into the bag, we randomly pull for deployment in this scenario. The Americans have to deploy both of their units first, and the Germans deploy second. You'll see as you play bolt action that it is random activation, so dice are pulled randomly from a bag, allowing you to activate units. Sometimes you may alternate, and other times you or your opponent may get multiple moves in a row. The Americans have decided to be hidden in their deployment, as they are completely out of line of sight or in cover from all enemies on the battlefield. As such, this confers a major penalty to anyone shooting at them. It's a minus four penalty if they're in soft cover, or a minus five for hard cover. They remain hidden until they are issued an advance, run, or fire order, or they are hit by enemy fire outside of a preparatory bombardment, which we may cover in a future game. These units can also be discovered if an enemy infantry or recce unit moves within 12 inches, or a vehicle such as a tank moves within 6 inches. The objective of this game is for both players to try to get as many of their units into their opponent's setup zone or even off the opposing side's table edge. And you gotta note that in this scenario, units are allowed to deliberately move off the table where they're normally not. They will do this by coming into contact with the opponent's table edge. We are scheduled to play six turns in this one, and we will roll a die to see if the game ends or if we go to a turn seven. And this game has the potential to go even one turn beyond that. For victory points, you will score one victory point for each enemy unit destroyed. You also score two victory points for each of your own units that is inside the defender's setup area that's 12 inches from their board edge, even if it's only partially. 
and three victory points for each of your own units that moved off the enemy table edge before the end of the game. If one side scores at least two more victory points than the other, then that side has won a clear victory. Otherwise, the result is deemed too close to call, and the honors are shared. It's a draw. With our miniatures deployed on the tabletop, we are ready for action, and turn one is about to get underway. I hope you enjoy. And starting off for turn one, the Americans pull the first die out of the bag. They will issue an advance order to this infantry unit. This does pull them out of hiding, but this advance order allowing them to move six inches because they are in terrain, that is all they can do. As a note, you cannot run while you're in terrain. The next die out of the bag will be the Americans as well, and they're going to issue that to a unit that is in reserve. They are just going to go down. The German player is going to do the same thing, issuing a down order to a unit in reserve. This goes out and back to the Americans as they continue to do that to see what the other forces are going to do until the Americans pull a die and they activate this bazooka team. They are going to take a run order, moving up behind this building, but staying out of line of sight of this Panzer IV. Next up, the Panzer IV will activate as the Germans pull their die, and an advance order will be played. The tank is going to move straight forward, 9 inches, and with another die pull for the Germans, the second lieutenant is going to follow up behind them with a run order. So turn one in the books, some key things to remember is infantry when they're in terrain, they can only move a maximum of six inches. Also, you will still issue orders to your units that are in reserve, you just send them down. So it's a great way to see what your opponent is going to do. Turn two coming up next. And with turn two underway, the Germans will pull the first die, attempting to bring one of these units in from reserve. They are regular, so they need a nine, but they do take a minus one penalty coming in from reserve, so they need an eight or less on 2d6. They do get that, and they will be issued a run order. And one of these squads of here grenadiers making their way onto the battlefield, moving 12 inches up the board. The next die out of the bag will belong to the Americans, and this bazooka team does not have line of sight to this Panzer IV, but they will play an advance order to get within line of sight of it. If you start your activation within line of sight of this Panzer IV, you will have to take a Tiger Fear order test. Lining up this shot with the bazooka, the tank is not more than 50% obscured, so it will be an open shot. Normally hitting on threes in this game, your base hit is on a three, it is short range. They did move, so it will need a four in order to hit the target and aiming to just getting into the side of this Panzer IV, that's really all it can see. And that is going to land a hit. This weapon has a pin value of five, and because it is a heavy weapon, that tank will take a pin marker. And with a pin value of five, we are gonna roll trying to equal or beat the tank's rating of nine. And on that three, you get plus one for being into the side. That is going to equal the armor value of this tank. And you get that plus one because it goes into the side. That is nine. And now we are going to roll up to see what happens, and it is just a one that is a crew stunned. The tank will take an extra pin marker going to two, and we will roll for a turret jam. And on a four up, that turret jams up and stays locked in place for the remainder of the game. That does not happen. That tank will receive a down order, however, and the next die out of the bag will belong to the Germans. The second lieutenant is going to issue an advance. They move into a firing position on this bazooka team, and they attempt to unload for shooting with the SMG. Starting with a three, it is two shots, and it is long range four, small team five, and in hard cover, that is a seven. This weapon does not suffer a minus one to move because it is an assault weapon. Both of these shots are going to miss. The rifle will then take aim, and while that is short range, it will be offset, getting that minus one because of moving. It is not an assault weapon. That misses as well. Another order die goes over to the Germans, and they are going to activate a unit in reserve, and rolling up for them. They are regular, so they need an eight or less. They will pass that order. Again, getting that minus one penalty coming in from reserve, and they will be issued a run order and come along the right flank. Next order belongs to the Americans, and they will attempt to issue a run order to this infantry unit. They are veterans, so needing a 9 or less. They normally are on a 10, but getting that minus 1 coming in from reserve, that is successful, and they will be issued in a run order coming in on the right flank. 
and the U.S. forces do have the remaining dice in the bag. The second lieutenant is going to attempt to come in from reserve, rolling up a three. That is going to easily bring them onto the table, getting a run order coming up behind the infantry unit on the left flank. And then the next die, obviously belonging to the Americans as well. The sniper team will come in on this seven. They will be issued a run order as well, getting into cover. And with the last die out of the bag, this infantry squad is going to play in advance order, cautiously moving up, knowing that that Panzer IV as well as another infantry squad is on the other side. And turn two comes to a close. Lots of reserves coming in. All units are now on the table. A little bit of trouble there from the Panzer IV. It took two pins and became stunned. But otherwise, no damage, no turret jam. We are getting ready to move into turn three. Turn three opens up, and the first die out of the bag belongs to the Germans. A snap two being played. This is something the second lieutenant can do to activate a unit that is close to him within six inches. First off, the second lieutenant is going to play in advance, moving up on this bazooka team, attempting to get within close range of that SMG, and they are going to fire. Normally hitting on a three, they are point blank, so within six inches, that's a plus one, so a two. The uh, hardcover takes it to a four, and then they are small team, so fives needed. Both of those are gonna miss. The rifle team will need sixes because they get a penalty of a minus one for moving, and that shot is gonna miss as well. As the second part of the snap two, the Panzer IV is gonna activate, rolling an order test, and they need to score an eight or lower, getting a plus one for the uh, officer being close by but having two pins on them, so they are able to activate, play in advance, he moves up, he's going to catch this infantry squad, just a, a little bit of them, and he's going to fire an HE shell into them. Normally hitting on a 3, it is point blank short range, so a 2, they are in uh, hardcover however, so that goes to a 4, and then because they moved, it is a 5. Now had they not, uh, they are going to play a down order to make this a 7, and had they not have done this, this HE shot would have landed. So the down order, again, this squad reacting, hitting the dirt, trying to be tough to hit, and that makes it sixes followed by sixes, which doesn't happen. The Americans then pull an order die and issue a fire order to the sniper team. They're going to eye down this German infantry team down the road, and they simply ignore all negative modifiers and hit on a 3. So that is going to connect with a target. They are regular, so needing a 4 to wound. There is no wound, but they will take a pin marker. The next die belongs to the Americans, and the second lieutenant is going to play in advance order, moving up. And they are going to attempt to shoot their rifles at the German second lieutenant. So normally hitting on a 3, they are in full cover, so a 5. There is no penalty to move and shoot for these Americans with rifles, but they are a small team, so they will need 6s. And two shots coming out for these two rifles, both are going to miss. Next die out of the bag belongs to the Germans, and a run order will be played, moving 12 inches, getting behind the woods, and out of line of sight. Next up, the Americans pull an order die, and they will play an advance order, moving up the road cautiously. They will get these two BARs into range of the second lieutenant, and they are going to open fire at them again, not suffering that minus one to move due to the American special rule. So normally hitting on three, small team four, and they are not in cover. But it is long range, so fives. Three hits are going to land. Now we will roll for damage, and they are regular, so needing fours to cause wounds. And there are no wounds, but they will receive a pen. The Germans activate next, and they will need to roll off this pen here. They are regular, so normally needing a 9. They have one pen, so an 8 or less. They fail the order test and go down. The bazooka team then activates for the Americans with the next order pull, and they are going to issue a run order, and they are charging into the German second lieutenant. Combat works pretty easily in this game. They're not coming across any terrain or anything like that, so they will get the first strike. And two dice being rolled out for the two men that are in combat, simply needing fours as these guys are regular. We're just rolling for damage. And it will cut one of them down. 
the Germans will get a chance to counterattack with the one that they have remaining, needing fours as well. That fails, and because they are wiped last to a man, they will be eliminated from the game, captured or otherwise. As a quick note, that SMG does have the tough fighters rule, but you have to hit in order for it to take place. The bazooka team will then consolidate four inches, getting back into cover. And the end of that combat brings us to the end of turn three. So the Americans scoring a victory point there for eliminating the German second lieutenant. We do have several of the infantry units trying to move across the field. The German Panzer IV appears to have one of the infantry squads pinned down on their right flank. Turn four coming up next. The first die out of the bag in turn four is going to belong to the Germans, and the tank is going to move forward with an advance order. First off, we do need to take an order test, so we are going to go back. We catch that pin marker on that tank. We do take an order test. It is regular, so needing a nine, or excuse me, an eight due to the minus one on the pin, eight or less, that will pass. That last pin marker will come off. Each time you successfully pass an order test, you do lose one pin marker. That tank moves up with an advance, you do get one pivot when you're advancing, and it is going to lay down fire from the machine guns. The whole mounted machine guns rattle off first, needing fives. This is point-blank range, but they decide to go down, and there is a minus one for moving. So, needing fives here, and those shots will connect twice. There is no damage scored, however. The coaxial machine gun then fires as well. Six shots coming out. The Germans do get an additional die on their machine guns for Hitler's buzzsaw. And two hits will go through, rolling up for damage as they are veterans, needing fives. One is a six. We will roll to see if that is exceptional, and it is not. The Americans get the next turn, and the sniper is going to attempt to lay down more fire against that same German unit it attacked last time. One shot coming from the rifle, hitting on a three, and that shot is going to miss. Next die belongs to the Germans. They activate the unit on the left flank. They're playing in advance order, moving up into the woods, which counts as soft cover. This unit will then eye down the American infantry on the other side of the building here. The SMG fires first two shots. They did move, which doesn't count with this guy, but it is long range and they're in full cover. So that will be sixes. The shots are gonna miss. Next up, the LMG fires out with five shots, also needing sixes, getting a minus one to move, but it is short range. Two of these go through, and then needing fives to do damage, and that will be no damage, but they will take a pin. The rest will be rifles. There will be one short, as one was the loader for the LMG. And the rifle shot's coming out from the rest of the group. There's five more, and there will be one hit, again, on sixes. And that is going to do a wound and cause a casualty. With the next order die, the Americans will activate. They will successfully roll off this pin, needing a nine or less. They will play in advance. They move up into the ruined building, and they will take shots of their own at that approaching German infantry squad. And nine rifles take aim, including the NCO, We'll be hitting on fours as there is a minus one due to the soft cover. That's the wooded area terrain that they're in. Remember, the U.S. forces do not suffer the minus one for moving. So hitting on fours, there will be five total hits that come across out of these nine. And then picking up those dice, rolling for damage. We are looking for fours as these guys are regulars. And that will be a total of three damage that go through. Next up, the BARs are going to fire as well. Four shots coming from the two of them, also hitting on fours. And that will be two hits that go through. Once again, needing fours to cause damage. There will be no damage there. No morale test needed to be taken. The next die belongs to the Americans. We take a Tiger Fear test for the second lieutenant as he is in line of sight and within 18 inches of that Panzer IV. They are then going to play in advance, bringing their rifles into vision of those grenadiers there in the wooded area. Normally hitting on a three, long range four, and in the soft terrain, five. So two shots coming out from their rifles, and both of these are going to connect. 
And now looking for fours, as they are regulars, that is going to be two wounds. We do roll up for one to see if it is exceptional, and it is. They will decide to remove the light machine gun. There will be one other cut down. And still no morale test taken, as more than 50% wasn't removed in the same shooting turn. Next up, there will be a run order that's played to this bazooka team from the Americans. And then the next die pulled belongs to the Germans. These grenadiers are going to try to roll off this pen, and they roll up a 9, which is not enough with that pen marker. They needed an 8 or less. They go down. This brings us to the end of turn 4, where a Panzer IV has an American infantry unit pinned down on the right flank. The infantry tried moving up the left, however, and met significant resistance from the U.S. infantry forces, as well as the 2nd Lieutenant. Units are moving into scoring position, turn 5 coming up now. And turn 5 is underway. These Americans here will pull the first order die. They're going to attempt to charge this Panzer IV hit by Tiger Fear, and they do have pens on them, so they're going to take an order test to see if they can successfully make this charge, and on an 11, that is going to fail. They will go down, Tiger Fear causing an additional minus one to their morale. The Americans pull the next die. The sniper team is going to shoot down range once again at that German unit, continuing to attempt to apply pens to them, and that shot is going to hit, giving them a second pen, and it will do damage as they are regular. One more removed. The Germans pull the next die. They're going to play in advance. They are now going to back up out of the woods here, first passing an order test on a 6 to uh, take their pen markers down from 2 to 1. And they pull back to the edge of the woods, and they are going to bring their guns to bear against the bazooka team that was creeping up to score here. The two rifles will take aim first, normally hits threes. They are short range, they did move, taking it to a four, and this is a small team, five. They have a pen marker, so six. And one of these shots is going to go through that will put a pen marker on that bazooka team, and it's another six, which is a wound, and potential for exceptional, it is. So the bazooka is taken out, and now the SMG is gonna line up shots as well. Two shots coming from him, and both of those are going to miss. That team is going to take a morale test here, and they are getting a minus two now because there's only one man left in their two-man team on this four. They are good. The American Infantry Squad activates next on that right flank. They play in advance order, moving up as far as they can to get enough guns into line of sight, trying to work around this wooded terrain. And there are going to be some rifles and potentially one of the BARs that can fire out against these guys. And we're going to take these rifle shots. First up, there will be two rifles that fire. Soft cover takes it to a four. There will be one hit and needs a four to cause damage. That will cut one more down. And because the German player pulled that guy, it took him out of line of sight of the remaining BAR. He will not get to shoot. The second lieutenant then activates next. They move with an advance into cover. And they're going to take two more shots downrange at that unit with their rifles. Normally on a three, long range four, and soft cover five. So shots coming out here that will miss. Germans activate next. This group has two pins on them now. And it looks like on a five, they are easily going to pass their order test. They will move down to one pin and execute a run maneuver, trying to move towards the scoring zone. Next eye out of bag will belong to the Americans. The bazooka team is going to execute a run order. First, they need to see if they can take an order test to roll off that pen. Normally successful on a 9, that pen takes them down to an 8, so an 8 or less required to roll off that pen. They will do that, and they will execute a charge into the Grenadiers. The lone man is going to get one swing here, needing a 4 to cause damage. And he will get that. Takes one of the Grenadiers down, and one of these Grenadiers will have the opportunity to swing back, also needing a four up. And he successfully kills the infantryman. Next die out of the bag belongs to the Germans. The Panzer IV declares a fire order into the U.S. infantry on the left side. There'd be 12 total shots hitting on fours. They are close range, but they did decide to go down, making that a minus two. So 12 shots are coming out from the coaxial and the hole mounted machine gun, firing these all together, and that will be a total of 7 hits that are going to go through, and because they are veterans, they will need 5s in order to cause damage. 
So rolling these out, and there's going to be two that go through. We will roll to see if these are exceptional. In most cases, you would get rid of the BARs if they are. You're rolling these two out, and they will not be exceptional. Two of these men will be cut down. They will take a pen marker. And that brings us to the end of turn five. So some things to note in this turn, in order to force a morale test, you have to lose at least 50% of your men to the same unit in the shooting phase when they're taking shots at you. So since that didn't happen with that group of grenadiers on their left flank, they did not have to test for morale. We've got turn six coming up now. And in turn six, the second lieutenant for the Americans will get the first order as they pull the first dice from the bag. It's a fire order, and they are shooting down at this lone grenadier it is normally on a 3, long range 4, soft cover 5. Now a small target 6, and there will be 1 hit, and as a regular, needs 4s to do damage. And peering around the building here, that is going to do it. That squad is eliminated. Americans pull the next die. The infantry on the left flank are going to activate. They are getting Tiger Fear, and they have 2 pins. So they will need a 7 or less in order to be successful with this order. That is good on this five. They will reduce their pens from two to one and execute a charge into this tank. They are tank hunters, so they do not suffer that minus three penalty like you would for normally charging an armored vehicle. There'll be a total of nine men that make it into contact with this tank with their anti-tank grenades. The tank is issued a down order as they are getting assaulted and we will need fours in order to hit. It's a four up unless the tank is moving. And that is going to be a lot of hits that go through. That's going to be a total of six. So we will roll up a D6, and we will look at the table. So it's treated as like a pen value of six almost. And then add the D6 to it, which is five. That will be 11. And because they are tank hunters, that is just normal damage. So it's 11 against this armor of nine. And because they're tank hunters, it's all normal. So this five will be an exploded tank. Had they not been tank hunters, it would have just been superficial damage, and you would have minus three from that roll. The infantry will then consolidate one inch as they get ready for the German forces coming towards them. The German forces are going to pull the next die, and they issue it to those guys on the right flank. They're going to attempt to roll off their pen here with a fire order. That is a 9, and that is going to fail as they are regular. They needed an 8 or less. They will just go down. They will not be able to do any damage to these Americans here, just not feeling up to what's going on with everything that's happening on the battlefield. The Americans then pull the next die and issue a run order to their infantry on the other side of the board and they make their way just into scoring position. Another die pull, the Americans will activate their sniper unit, issuing a run order, getting them to about the halfway point. As that brings us to the end of turn six, Germans have taken significant casualties here. The Americans have moved up the board, eliminated the Panzer IV, which was their only real threat to score. And now the Americans have another unit in scoring position. At the end of turn six, we roll a die and to see if the game will continue on a one or two, or I believe a three, it does not. We do get a two, and that will bring us to the end of this one. It is going to be an American victory. The US forces will score three points for eliminating the German second lieutenant, as well as the Panzer IV and one infantry unit. They will score two points for getting one of their infantry squads into the German deployment zone. The Germans will score one point for eliminating the American bazooka team, bringing our total score to five to one in favor of the U.S. forces. I hope you enjoyed this bolt action battle report. We dialed back the points so we could really try to focus on telling you what the moves were while still trying to fit it into approximately our 30 minute timeline. Be sure to let us know of any corrections that you saw in the comments. Also thank you to the 2022 Coffee Supporters Club. If you would like any more information on that, a link will be in the description. Once again, thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Take care.